Chapter 24, Despair and Opportunity. Standing alone at the junction of hope and despair, self-trust and futility, he chose the way of opportunity. I recently read an inspiring article in the Yoga Journal. As an example of self-healing, the article gave a brilliant example of human potential and uncompromising devotion to the path of higher consciousness. It told the story of a man who rose from the ashes of devastating injury to a meaningful and productive spiritual life, and it is a testament to the force of directed will towards wholeness. In my view, there is no function within self as central as will. It is the key to success or failure, speed or slack on the path. The story, entitled The Real Miracle, from Yoga Journal, January, February 1997, is really about human genius, and it shines a light for all to see that the centering of will alone has the power to take us from despair to glory. Here is the story. In the early 1970s, Mitchell May suffered a devastating car crash, after which he was told that his leg would need amputation. Yet, rather than surrender to a life of limitation, he refused his doctor's advice and chose to keep the leg, even though he was told its massive infection might prove fatal. Nevertheless, by dint of great effort and the spiritual energy of a Mr. Jack Gray, a master healer with whom he worked closely, a man whom I'd consider an adept, a white magician, Mitchell May went on to heal his leg completely. Today he too is an expert healer. Of course, the happy ending did not come overnight. Along the way were years of physical pain, mental discipline, rigorous practice and purification, trial and error. But fate was also at work here. Mitchell May had what could be called a karmic link with his teacher, who had actually predicted that they would meet, and his accident was probably no accident at all. The crisis it posed was likely planned by higher self as the major crossroads and growth opportunity of his lifetime. What I found so inspiring was the force of commitment with which he took up the cross and mastered his fate. At the most obvious level, we can see how day by day, one small step at a time, this man overcame extreme pain and despair. He trusted himself at the deepest levels, from which emerges the power to triumph. He met head-on the challenge of self-healing. Resisting defeat, he recognized opportunity where others saw tragedy. Whether or not Mitchell May knew it, this was the crossroads which likely determined all his further growth in this incarnation. It likely required a reversal of perception in which he could perceive his latent potential and realize opportunity in grave crisis. I assume this was a man who had already developed inner strength, a man who had laid the foundations of character through a lifelong process of self-trust and self-acceptance. Such foundations were needed in order to even perceive a choice and summon his will to make the requisite effort. He made a conscious decision to keep his body intact, to persevere in the healing and training with Jack Gray, Standing alone at the junction of hope and despair, self-trust and futility, he chose the way of opportunity and brought forth his will to forge the situation as best he could. Certainly, the ability to appreciate a crossroads and proceed along the hard way of self-possession was also born of previous choices, so numerous he surely couldn't count them all. It's important to realize, however, that this type of choice is not confined only to crisis. In fact, we stand at all sorts of crossroads all the time. How often do we feel stuck, at an impasse, and blocked from what we want? How often do we feel resigned to cruel fate under heavy clouds of doubt? It is easy to see how life throws us roadblocks, how things do not go our way. We all know what that is like. It is much harder to see the opportunities that lie latent in all such situations, the unlimited choicefulness of each moment. Taking a personal blow, we can grow empowered or enraged. Emotional limitations can lead us to poison our self-confidence or instead reinvigorate self-reliance. Truly, the glass is neither half full nor half empty. It is clear. The Law of One books give an exercise to help us develop our range of free choice, a practice for discovering the treasure of the moment. When asked for a tool to accelerate growth towards realizing unity with all, Ra gave the following. Quote, exercise 1. This is the most nearly centered and usable within your illusion complex, the 3D world. The moment contains love. 
This is the lesson goal of this illusion or density. The exercise is to consciously see that love in awareness and understanding. The conscious statement of self to self of the desire to seek love is a central act of will. End quote. The practice is simple, though easy to forget, and it's comprised of two levels. One, realizing what is, and two, realizing our choice. Regarding the first, when Ra says, quote, the moment contains love, they're pointing to the essential quality which underlies all experience, the unconditional love of the Creator, the grace which allows us to live, move, and have our being. Understanding this presence leads eventually to liberation because it calls forth vision and perception of what is eternal. At the second level of the exercise, Ra points to the latent freedom hidden in the moment, the choice to realize love, seeing, feeling, and responding from unconditional acceptance and kindness to all, especially ourselves. This turn of perception is no little matter. It's a potent statement from conscious self to true self, or total self, an invocation that fuels the further desire for truth, an embrace of divine providence, an honest acceptance of and alignment with the real. It reveals the most sincere seeking, and as such, it potentizes will and resonates with our core at which personal will is one with universal flow. Seeking love is seeing love, and seeing the real empowers all further seeking. In the same way that Mitchell May discovered how momentous decisions are built upon the incremental foundations of a thousand lesser daily acts, all true spiritual growth is self-reinforcing. You can trust the value of any teaching or spiritual practice by its long-term effects when integrated into your life. The proof is in the using. And just as conscious seeking is a choice, so too is resignation. Sorrow does not just rain down on us. Despair is generated by a freely chosen response to circumstances that challenge us at points of conflict, confusion, and weakness. Mitchell May dug deep within self and brought forth will. With stern resolve, he applied it deep into his pain and despair and chose opportunity, not tragedy. As Ron noted, the moment contains love, promise, bounty, and richness. That we feel estranged from such abundance is our own doing, and whatever we have created through ignorance can certainly be refashioned through loving wisdom. Many people interested in the spiritual side of UFO and ET life often tell me about special contacts they've had with beings of light, ET or angelic. What they usually don't realize in their awe is that these beings are always around. Their presence can be known and felt all day long. Moments of higher contact are simply moments of opening our eyes to the multidimensional reality that ever is. This is not to say that masters are online 24 hours a day for your every whim, like spiritual 7-Elevens, but the loving face of true nature is ever shining. Basic wisdom and compassion do not take time off. They are always available because they are what we really are. Yet it can be quite hard to find this in the heat of the moment. If the mind is disturbed, if emotions are roiling and thoughts are spinning like a tape loop, how can we perceive any choice at all? At this point we must turn to meditation, the formal practice of learning peace and inner silence, opening the gateway to will and what Christians call the Beatitudes. At the conclusion of the Yoga Journal article, Mitchell May remarks that the body's infinite capacity for healing is the real miracle. Truly, this is wonderful, but it's only a miracle within a greater miracle, a single melody within a larger symphony, a symphony in which mind inclines towards spirit, and the spirit shines blessings forever. The great plan is the symphony, the infinite creator, the conductor, and all beings, the players. To know this miracle, we need calm to bring vision and will to make choice. At these levels of awareness, despair has long been vanquished. In the next chapter, we will rest longer upon this axis of despair and opportunity, considering it from another angle, the tragic death of Diana, Princess of Wales.